Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Those edits that you just saw there were made using presets from my first ever preset pack, which is now available for purchase over on my website. The link's in the description below, but I've worked incredibly hard on those over the last year or so, um, and I'm really pleased with how they've come out. So um, yeah, if you wanna support the channel, then the link's in the description below and uh, you can pick yourself up a nice little preset pack. It features 10 different presets and there's also a separate section with a couple of grain presets and then there's also another color grading section where you can sort of mix and match and intertwine the existing presets and different color grades. So yeah, um, as a thank you, it's also currently on sale for a limited amount of time. So you can find the link in the description below, but it brings me on nicely to this week's video, 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 which has been highly, highly requested on the channel for a while, which is pretty mad really, because um, I don't really find myself the most talented editor, but um, yeah, it's been highly requested an in depth editing session, and it just works out nicely that I've just released my new preset pack. People would think that this is planned, but hey, here we are. So this one might be a bit longer. Let's jump straight on in to Lightroom and uh, we'll have a little play around with a couple of images and show you what exactly I do. This is one of my favorite shots that I've ever taken. This is from about a year ago nearly now here in New Zealand at Mount Cook National Park. Just an absolutely magical mission with some incredibly good friends of mine. And uh, well, I look at it now, I've got goosebumps. I'm so, so blessed to call this place home. I mean, just look at that. What a vista. But um, yeah, let's jump straight on in. And um, first off, that image is incredibly blue. Um, yeah, shooting on auto white balance. I don't know what's gone on there. So we'll get that fixed up. Um, and then we'll jump over and have a little look at what these presets are saying. But there's a couple of ways that you can adjust your white balance. Now, there's three ways that I'll show you. First of all, you can come over here to where it says as shot, give that a click. And uh, I always like to have a little play and see what auto does. It ain't done a bad job to be fair. Like, I'd say we're pretty much bang on there. Or depending on the conditions, like say this is daylight, we'll probably do around 5,500 Kelvin. Yeah, still a bit too cool. Um, the second way is to use this color picker tool. Uh, you want to find a neutral area, really. Now, this image is not going to be that. You're not going to really find any grays because where there are grays, like for instance here, look how the grays are made up of multiple different tones. So if I was to hit that, I'll give it a go it's affected like all of those grays. It's not like a neutral, like a neutral sort of gray across that whole, whole palette. So I think for this image, the best way to go is probably just manually adjust it. And that's simply just by having to play around with these sliders here, um, the, the temperature and the tint and bring that white balance up. Yeah, I think it looks all right about there to be fair. As with anything in Lightroom, the adjustments are non-destructive. So I could leave it like that. And then I'm going to come back in maybe after applying a preset and um, and adjust it. You know, I could adjust it even more. I could make it cooler. I could make it warmer. For the purpose of this video, let's jump on straight over here to the presets. Now I've got 10 presets here, like I mentioned at the start of this video, and they're all listed from one to 10 in order of how frequently I use them. Number one, Phoenix, uh, my absolute go-to. Probably use it like 70 to 80% of my images over the last year or so. Like I've been loving it. It's not great on here because it's quite desaturated in the blue. So it's not really going to work on this image. Now presets are sometimes, but not always a one click edit. Like they're a great starting point to bring you closer to a final image. You know, it may just be a case of cycling through them until you find the one that works for you and then sort of tweaking it from there. Verdant, I'm gonna use that because it's quite a strong preset, but I'll show you what you can do. If you think it's too strong when you throw one on, you can come up here to the amount slider and I can just bring that back. I mean, 60% quite liking that. 
So yeah, you don't always have to use them at 100%. You can bring them back. And uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good to start off with. We'll have a look at the before and afters. I mean, I'm blue dubba d dubba da comes to my mind when I see that. Um, and yeah, it looks a bit better. And all I've done is literally sorted the white balance out and thrown that preset on. And uh, we're on our way. It's a great starting point. I might just have a little bit more warmth in there now. We've got that on. Yeah, let's jump straight on in. So exposure, it's already quite bright. So what I might just deal with is sort the highlights out. Might bring the highlights back because what I'm going to do is that sky is looking a little bit dark. So I might bring the blues up when we get down to the, the HSL. Um, I'm going to bring my shadows down a bit because I've recently learned that if you bring the blacks up, it's way less destructive to your image. So look, my blacks are on 95% there. If I throw my, my greys up to like 100%, I mean, it just don't look great, does it? It like flattens out your image. So um, we'll bring the blacks up. Get a little bit of whites in there. Uh, I think the shadows might need to come up just a little bit. And yeah, we're on our way here. Yeah, I think that looks as good as what we're going to get. So to introduce a bit more contrast or reduce the amount of contrast, we can come down here into the tone curve. I've been playing around with this recently, the parametric curve. If you're just in a bit of a quick, you know, look, I mean, just bringing the highlights up, it brings that sky back to life. I probably don't even need to play with a HSL now because that looks that looks good to me. But yeah, if this is this little wiggly one here, but yeah, if you're in a rush and you just want to get this done, I've been playing around with this lately and it seems to do a good job. Here we go. That's bringing a bit more. If you pull the shadows down in this, it's bringing a bit more clarity into, into these mountains in the background there. So I think we'll leave it like that. Um, now, I don't really tend to play around with the colors as much. Like the reason why I've set these presets up is for quickness, ease, and like, I don't really want to be playing around with every slider i mean i've wasted 10 years doing that so this is why i've got these out to you know to speed up my workflow and get it done so i don't really want to play with any of that i mean i might bring the oranges down because they are a little bit i don't know because it's so there's so much contrast isn't there between the lights and the shadows that they are a bit washed out but a little thing that i'll show you what i like to use is this little fella here um this little circle now if i select that and then come over to any color i want really for instance i don't know here that's going to select just that color and if you look over to the luminance slider obviously that color is made up of orange and yellow and i can just up or down up or down and it can adjust in that way and that obviously works for the you know the hue the saturation and the luminance so yeah handy little tool and also why i've just shown you that little tip let me run back up to the tone curve and show you something else that i do in there so if i come up to the tone curve and i wanted to adjust it we all know how funky the tone curve is like it goes mad do you know what i mean like it's so annoying to use so if you want a bit more control over it you can select the option key on your keyboard hold that down hover over a point and it basically gives you way more sort of control over it like i'm going mad with my mouse here and it gives you way more control over it another thing if you hold the shift key then you can basically just go up and down like you know it stays in that location it goes up and down so very handy to use while i'm there i just raise that shadow just a little bit We'll just raise the blacks just to sort of mat them off. And we're also going to go like that with the whites. Yeah, that looks a bit better. But let's have a quick look before and after. Yeah, a hell of a lot better. So we'll come into the color grading. Now, I did mention as well before the start of this video that I've got some other color grade sort of presets over here that you can mix and match with the original color grades that are within the presets so if you didn't like the look of the vibe that this one's giving you then you can come over here and be like oh i want to add the filmic one which you know is more of a, a green in the shadow because you know 
a bit more filmic. But yeah, we'll leave that as it is. But this is another good place to bring in or add contrast or take away contrast from your image by having a play with the luminance sliders within the color grading. So if I'm bringing the midtones down a bit, I'm adding a bit more contrast into that image. I personally, it doesn't do a lot. It's very subtle, but I think that that looks a lot better. Let's have a look what the shadows, obviously that's going to like map the shadows out. Um, so I might just bring them back a bit. Highlights, I don't think I can go too much higher with the highlights, but these are just things that make the editing process a hell of a lot easier instead of like going through every single slider for me. As I said, like, um, yeah, it's just so much easier and quicker to use. So let's throw some sharpening in. Another good one, obviously, if you select your, your sharpening amount, if we hold the option key down, and press on the masking, you can see where it's white, we're affecting the whole image. Now, I don't want that whole image to be sharp. So I normally bring it up to about 80. And as you can see now, all of the things in white, all the areas in white are being affected or are being sharpened, basically. So I bring that up a little bit more because there's some other bits and bobs in there that I don't really want. Um, but that's only affecting, or well, it's only sharpening those points of the image. So that's another good one. And there we are. I think um, we're pretty good to go. I mean, I could go on for a lot more here and, and have a play. I might just come up to the masks and just select this mountain range here. Does a great job. I'll tell you what, like this has been a game changer, this coming in. And what I'm going to do, I just want to add a little bit more contrast. I might just bring the highlights down a bit. I could put a little bit of clarity in there. I don't want to go too mad with that. Um, I might just put a little bit of sharpening. And then one more thing I'm going to do, because otherwise we'll be here all day, is... Select old mate here, Caleb, the legend that decided to run out and um, walk across that while we were all sorting ourselves out and uh, became our model. By the way, this shot was never planned. Um, I was actually tying my crampon up because uh, we kept having to take our crampons off, put our crampons back on. And as I looked up, my mate Caleb here had run out or like walked across this this scene and I looked up and was like oh my god like what a scene you know and I didn't actually realize how how cool the image looked until I actually got back home and checked it uh, and was like wow I think this is probably one of my favorite images ever but yeah I'm just going to raise the shadows up on him I don't really want to raise the exposure because that will blow him out so I can raise the shadows a little bit and then I'm gonna throw a little bit of sharpness on him I mean you're not even going to notice it but here we are and then just in this bottom corner here, we've got a bit of a blue shadow, which I don't really like. So I'm just going to put a um, little graduated filter on there and pull it down a little bit. So it's not as distracting. Pull the shadows down. Um, I might actually take just a wee bit of saturation out but it does make it a bit green so if i throw a little bit of pink tint in there i don't know it's very hard to see but this is what i mean you can get you can just be here for ages but yeah let's have a look at the before and after i personally think it's a hell of a lot better and i think we'll leave that there. I don't want to waffle on too long because uh, the majority of people have probably already left by now. We've been going on for quite some time. I hope you found some of the sort of tricks and tips and how I go around editing my photos beneficial. As I say, I'm not really a very amazing editor. I'm very like, you know, I don't really tinker around it much. I like to take photos, get them edited quick, get them, you know, out and done and sort of thing, you know. I do enjoy editing, but um, I'd much rather be outside taking photos than editing photos. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Presets are in the description below. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!